So let's continue with our VPN discussion and we'll talk about IPsec VPNs. IPsec VPNs are perhaps the most common in-use VPNs, especially for site-to-site -site VPNs. However, at this level of the CCNA, you really only have to know the very basics about IPsec and some of the terminology. So IPsec is short for IP security. It's an open standards-based method of authenticating and encrypting data for transit across insecure networks, i.e. the Internet. IPsec, if configured correctly, provides end-to-end -end security between any two endpoints on the VPN tunnel. IPsec works at layer 3 in the OSI model and can protect any upper layer protocol. So it doesn't really matter if you're using TCP or UDP, so long as it's part of the IP protocol suite, you can encrypt it with IPsec. About the only thing you can't encrypt with IPsec are multicasts and broadcasts, but that's simply because IPsec kind of acts like a router, and most routers don't forward broadcast and multicast anyway. Now there is a way you can do that so that you can run routing protocols through a VPN tunnel. It's called GRE, but again, that's way beyond the pale for CCNA. We're looking at the very, very basics, just scratching the surface of IPsec here. At a very basic level, an IPsec tunnel functions like this. You have a session key in your sending device. The sending device takes the unencrypted packet and a session key and runs them through a cryptographical mathematical formula and encrypts the data. That encrypted data is then stuck inside a new IP packet with a VPN header that has some more information about how to decrypt the packet, and we'll get into that on the next slide. It's then sent across the internet to the receiving device. The receiving device takes this encrypted packet and the session key, the same session key that the sending device used up there in the first step, and it runs them through the decryption formula to get the original data out. And if the encryption keys work, and if everything works as it's supposed to, which it does if it's configured correctly, then the unencrypted data is exactly the same as the encrypted data. IPsec is only as secure as the keys that are used in this cryptographic formula. If those keys are compromised in some way, then your VPN tunnel is just worthless because anybody can grab the data, grab the keys, run it through this known cryptographic formula because that's built into all of these IPsec devices and decrypt your data at any point they want to. Now you can set up manual keying on your IPsec connection. That's a major security risk for the simple reason that those keys are very easy to compromise. And if they are compromised, you'll never know unless you happen to notice someone else on your VPN tunnel when they shouldn't be. To be honest, most new VPN architectures and VPN appliances don't support manual keying at all. The industry standard method of dynamic keying, which is the Internet Key Exchange, or Ike. Now the text and the syllabus for this course only mentions Ike. It doesn't really mention Ike v2. I'm going to mention it just because it's Ike. It's the next version of it. The first version of the Internet Key Exchange was very, very finicky. All the protocols and everything had to match exactly on both ends. And if one of you picked a different option, then the tunnel wouldn't come up and you really wouldn't get any messages why it wouldn't come up. Ike v2 has the facility built into it to negotiate encryption between the two endpoints. So if one end picks triple DES and the other end picks SHA, so long as the appliances are configured to negotiate, then they'll send messages back and forth and say, oh, well, you're configured for triple DES. I'll tell you what, I'll use triple DES too because I'm allowed to use that particular encryption protocol. Now, the settings obviously have to match on both ends still, but you don't have to be quite as strict to make sure that all of the ducks are exactly in a row. Ike dynamically changes the key periodically, so even if someone does manage to break that key, it's only valid for a short period of time. Now, when you set up a VPN tunnel, you can tell Ike, I want you to change the key after you've transmitted every X number of megabytes of data, or I want you to change the key every X minutes or X hours. The defaults in some of the current versions of the ASA code is change the key every 8 hours or 100 megabytes, whichever happens first. So the more astute among you may have already asked, well, obviously Ike has to have something in common in order to even set up the key exchange. How do we get the initial key between the endpoints? Very good question. That initial keying is done using the Diffie-Hellman protocol. And again, I won't get into all the math of exactly how DH works, but essentially, if you have a known password on both ends, which you have to have in any type of VPN setup, the Diffie-Hellman protocol uses that common password to send the initial key pair for Ike across the wire. Now, some of you might be asking, well, why don't you just use Diffie-Hellman for everything? 
And the short answer is the Diffie-Hellman protocol is very computationally expensive. It takes a lot of CPU and router resources to compute these keys dynamically and send them across the wire. So Diffie-Hellman is used every time Ike needs to renegotiate and it shuts down otherwise and IPsec takes it from there. So IPsec performs integrity and authentication checking functions using two different types of protocols. The first is called the authentication header or AH. AH performs authentication, i.e., is this the right peer? Am I talking to who I think I'm talking to? It also performs message integrity. Was the message changed in transit? Encapsulating security payload is the complementary function to AH. Now, ESP can perform authentication and integrity checking. The authentication is not as strong as authentication header or AH. ESP, however, also performs the payload encryption. So in reality, on most VPN tunnels, or most IPsec VPN tunnels, you will have AH and ESP both running. AH is doing the authentication and integrity. ESP is actually doing the heavy lifting of all the encryption and decryption. That's a lot of terms. I know it is. You can find a discussion of IPsec VPNs just about anywhere on the internet if this really piques your fancy. But for the time being, this concludes our overview of IPsec VPNs.